Greetings, I'm James Duffy. I'm the producer of the ME 163A DVD package you're now watching. What we're about to see here is some footage highlighting the early development of the ME 163A. This is one of the early ME 163A prototypes being rotated on the ramp at Pinamunda West. Pinamunda, of course, was the German research facility where the V1 and V2 weapons were tested. Readily apparent in these shots is the, the very glossy paint job that's been applied to this prototype. It was felt that a glossy paint job would help improve high-speed performance. The ME-163A was never intended to be a weapon. It was uh, strictly a development aircraft. The ME-163B was already in development by the time the ME-163A first flew. There was a, a bit of testing that occurred with R4M rockets on the undersides of the ME-163A wing, however. Here we have some footage of the ME-163A in flight. Uh, these are unpowered passes here. You can catch a little glimpse of the tail skid at the end of the aircraft there. By all accounts, the glide performance of the ME-163 was quite extraordinary. It had a glide ratio, or a lift-to-drag ratio to be more precise, of about 20 to 1. Uh, that was comparable to many of the high-performance sailplanes of the day. Here we have a shot of uh, ME-163 on takeoff roll. The ME-163 suffered from extremely long takeoff rolls. Liftoff speed in the aircraft was somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 miles an hour. And that takeoff roll took place over an unfinished, unsurfaced airfield. That is uh, just ground there bouncing across there. By all accounts, it was quite a jarring experience for the pilots. Here's another view of a takeoff roll. In this particular shot, we can clearly see the turbine exhaust coming out from the underside of the aircraft as it lifts off. Right, uh, right there, you can see the exhaust streaming out from the belly of the aircraft and also the uh, landing gear being jettisoned. The landing gear were a big problem for the designers. There were cases where after landing gear release, the gear would actually bounce up and strike the aircraft in flight. Imagine what that would have been like for a pilot to, uh, to experience that. You're already keyed up, and then all of a sudden something hits your aircraft 30 or 40 feet off the ground. It had to be quite an experience. Here we have a shot of Heinrich Dittmar in the cockpit of the ME-163A. He's one of the three pilots who's probably most closely associated with the ME-163 series, along with Rudy Oppitz and uh, Wolfgang Spott. All three of them were very experienced sailplane pilots, and that experience led to them being recruited for the DFS-194 and ME-163A projects. Here's another shot of a, a liftoff. Again, we can see the turbine exhaust streaming from the, beneath the aircraft. The very visible exhaust plume became a problem when the aircraft entered operational use in 1944. This was by no means a stealthy aircraft. We're about to see some air-to-air -air shots of the ME-163A in flight. Again, we can see the tail skid there at the aft end of the aircraft. As the aircraft rolls over onto its side, we can also catch a glimpse of the undersurface wing flaps. The ME-163As, both the A and the B model actually, were frequently towed for both research and training purposes. Uh, an ME-110 was used as the tow aircraft. That must have been quite an experience as the rotation speed for the ME-110 was much lower than that of the ME-163A. In other words, the ME-110 pilot would have to stay very close to the ground just after liftoff, accelerating to a speed where the, the ME-163 could become airborne. Here's a shot of an ME-163A coming to a stop. The chase car and ground crew hurry to the aircraft. Even after the aircraft was stopped on the ground, it was considered important to get to the aircraft as quickly as possible and get the pilot out in the event of a fuel tank rupture and the possibility of some residual fuel leaking from the aircraft. The hydrogen peroxide used was very nasty stuff. Here's a powered air-to-air -air shot, again in the ME-110. 
the ME 163A will zoom right by. In 1941, the aircraft set a world speed record of 1,003 kilometers per hour. The aircraft comes to a halt, and now we have some footage of the aircraft being put away for the night. Uh, one thing I find intriguing here is it appears those are privacy panels of some type there. There may have been some concern about uh, espionage at uh, Pinamunda, and uh, they may have wanted to keep the testing as quiet as possible. In the background of these shots, we can see a uh, JU-87 Stuka there. We're going to move on to some alternate footage. Much of this footage is very similar to the footage we've already seen. I suspect that they were different uh, generations of duplicates of the original film. Contrast is better in some, detail is better in others, so we've elected to include both sets of footage on this DVD package. There you can see the hole for the tow hook and the nose of the aircraft. Let's go back and discuss the challenges of long takeoff rolls with the ME-163 again. The bumpy ride across an un improved airfield wasn't the only problem the pilots faced. In fact, the, the greatest problem with the long takeoff roll was the lack of directional stability that the pilot would have in the early part of that takeoff roll. Below a certain speed, the rudder was largely ineffective. So a device was developed called a straw router, and please forgive my German is non-existent, so I probably just mangled that. But the, the concept was simple. It was a vectoring device that could be uh, placed in the exhaust plume of the rocket engine to give the pilot a little bit of extra directional stability on the takeoff roll. This was tested on both the ME-163A and the ME-163B. Ultimately, it was considered too complex and was eventually abandoned. The footage continues with a series of takeoff rolls and climbs with the ME-163A. You can really get a sense for how extraordinary the climb performance of the ME-163 was. Both the A model and the B model were capable of climbing from ground level to roughly 40,000 feet in about three to three and a half minutes. The ME-163A used a rocket engine developed by an engineer by the name of Helmuth Walter. Uh, this was a bipropellant rocket engine, and uh, the ME-163A, for the most part, used what was called the cold engine. It used, as propellants, uh, a compound called T-stuff, which was hydrogen peroxide and water, and Z-stuff, which was a concentrated solution of sodium or calcium permanganate. That Z-stuff was also used to power the turbine on both the A and B models in both the hot and cold engine versions. The so-called hot engine was tested on a couple of the later ME-163As, but most of the hot engine testing occurred with the B model ME-163. That brings us to the end of the audio portion of this track. The video will continue for approximately 90 seconds more. <laughs> 